All right, what is up coders? Here today, we're gonna to take you through how to code your very own custom React hook. We're gonna make a form hook designed to handle any number of inputs as well as handling a registration callback if you so desire and you wanna get real fancy. Uh, yeah, there are dependencies out there, but where's the fun in that? Let's code our own and that will allow you to understand how these dependencies out there work, really show that you know your chops when it comes to React and the new hooks API when you are are out there trying to show off to employers, check out my portfolio and check out my ability to write my own custom hooks. So this is gonna be targeted towards some basic React knowledge and people that are just now learning hooks and any of our uh, covalent students trying to figure out what the hooks API is and some of the fundamentals of React as well. So as of right now, this guy is using a, the use state hooks and I have two controlled inputs and a on submit handler right here that will allow me to console log the values of these inputs. So let's register for this Smash Brothers tournament with my own name and handle, loop with tuna no crust, and register. And there's our output. Just a fancy little console log with an object with the you know properties of the uh, the values of the inputs right there. Nothing to it. Nothing magical. All style with Bootstrap, which is some class names to make it look like not absolute trash. So let's jump into the code and refactor it to use a custom hook instead. My index.js is where I import my bootstrap CSS file so I can reference these class names, nothing too magical for there. So that's the one dependency I have installed in my package JSON bootstrap. Um, from there, my app is nothing more than the bootstrap container row and column system to organize the layout of my page where I have my form rendering to the screen from my form component. So jumping into the form component, I have React and UState imported. It is a functional stateless, stateless functional component with no props being passed to it. I have two calls to UState generating a state and set state for name and handle respectively. I have my register function, which prevents the form from refreshing the page. Otherwise, it would refresh the page and we lose our initial state and the console log would disappear. That's where I just console log the object with name and handle inside of it. My form here is fairly simple. Again, the most, the biggest part of it is just ignoring all these class names from Bootstrap to make it look nice and fancy. The big thing to keep in mind here is I have an on submit event that references register up here. If you guys are new to the React world, we don't have to worry about binding context with our inline arrow function or in the constructor because we're referencing an arrow function up here and that's what they do for us. So our on submit here doesn't have to say, okay, call back the register function afterwards. All we gotta do is reference register, which is indeed itself a register, an arrow function that will persist or rather remember the context of the event that happens, AKA we can prevent the form default behavior. Down here for our inputs, they are controlled React inputs, meaning their value is tied to some piece of state as a string and they have an on change handler that updates that piece of state. So both of these on changes will generate events and we're gonna take the event.target.value and call our setter functions to set name and set handle right there with the value of what we type in. So as we're typing in the inputs, these values will be updating and when it times to finally come and click on on submit and register, it will prevent the form refresh and console log and that's it. So fairly simple, really not that bad. If you've just gotten into hooks and use state in particular, if you're a fresh student in the hook section of our curriculum, then you've probably written something very similar to this anyway. And if you wanted to expand upon it, let's make our own custom hook that does this instead. Because if we had say, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 more inputs, that'd be a lot more calls to use state and it can get fairly gnarly, fairly fast. So let's make our own custom form, use form instead. I'm gonna create another folder called utils or utilities, whatever you prefer. And we're gonna try and keep our code a bit more structured, a bit more organized. And that also shows that we know what we're doing when it comes to employers looking at our repos. So here, useform.js will be our utility file. We're not gonna be writing any JSX, so we don't need to actually import React. All we need to do is import use state from the React library, because we're gonna be building our entire use form off of that. So we're gonna have const use form is a function that currently takes no argument. And before I forget, like I have in the last attempt at this recording, I'm going to have <laughs> export default use form, where I forgot to write that, had a big fat error, and I panicked and blanked and I couldn't find what the error was without uh, making a fool of myself in a recording. So this is take two. Here, we're gonna have our use form function and what it's going to do is it's going to make its own call to use state or rather it's going to return state and set state like we're used to and we're going to have our use state call and our initial value is actually going to be a blank object because we want this object to dynamically grow with key 
names of the name of the input and the value of what we've typed into that input. We want it to dynamically maintain itself and grow itself as we keep on adding more and more inputs, right? So while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and automatically write our return. We're gonna kind of copy the syntax of our useState function, where we're gonna pass the value of state up from this use form. We're not gonna pass set state though. We're gonna be making our own custom function to return instead. And this is where the fun starts to happen. We're gonna have a const handle change function that's gonna be dynamically handling the change on any input we hand uh, pass this to. We don't have to worry about writing another handle change function for every single one anymore. It is going to be coming with an event, being generated with an event. That way we can get the event.target.value of the input and more importantly, the event.target.name of the input. And I need to actually come in here and write these attributes. So the name of this input is indeed name itself. And the name of this input will be handle. And that event.target.name is what these values represent. And that's gonna be the key and value pairs we have going on in our object. So what we need to do is call our set state function that's going to update our state for us. Now we need to keep in mind that if we call set state with a new object, it's gonna override the old object and we're gonna cause some problems. We need to maintain the entirety of the old state object. So if you didn't know this as a uh, new React developer or new to hooks, we can not only just pass in a flat value to set state like we have here, passing in whatever e.target.value the string value is, we can maintain the and reference the old state object by referencing, hey, take the previous state, now execute some code on it. We're gonna do an implicit return and maintain that old object via our handy dandy buddy, the spread operator. So this will say, okay, create a new object for our new updated state. Take the old state object and spread it out in this new object. Maintain all of its properties and values. But now we wanna create a new key and value pair by saying, hey, find the val find or create the e.target.name key, aka the name of our input, and I want its value to be e.target.value, what we are actually writing inside of our on change handlers, right? So the only problem here is there's gonna be one little error we're gonna find that's kind of unique to how React works. So you have, if you guys are curious, and it obviously doesn't work the same way as the JavaScript events do. It actually maintains what are called synthetic events in React. That way it can pull certain calls together and do things like that. Anytime you're referencing an event asynchronously somehow, you typically bind context with it or do some magic with it that, in that way in the class-based components. Here we're gonna have to make use of something called event.persist, which I'll be going over here in just a second where you need to add it. So I'm also gonna return my handle change function reference inside of my array here. So now all we gotta do is import this file for use. While I'm up here, I'm gonna remove the use state call. I'm going to also import use form from my utilities folder and slash use form like so. That way down here, I can remove the calls to these guys and just replace them with the one singular call to my use form function. And that should return if you recall state and handle change. We can call it whatever we want with ES6 array destructuring. We can call it values if we want, because we're tying it to value, input values. It makes sense to maybe rename it values. And we'll have our handle change function also returning. So this will stay as is for now. I can show you something cool we can do with that later, but down here in our inputs. So it'll no longer be just name. It's going to be values, the object that returns from our use form dot name and values dot handle. Now, because the object initially is a blank object, these guys will be undefined and the value will not be controlled with a string anymore, which will make, make us throw a particular error. It's not throw an error in the DOM saying you're switching from an uncontrolled to a controlled input and blah, 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 blah. You can circumvent that by giving these guys default values of strings and then overriding that with values dot whatever your object key and value pair is. And that'll override that without throwing a warning or error into your console log. Just as the same, we need to change these on change handlers to no longer need to reference an arrow function generating an event and calling a function on that. All it needs to do is reference our one magical handle change function that should handle any input dynamically just like that. Now this is where the problem comes in because remember on change does generate an event and because in JavaScript, functions are first class objects. We are passing the reference of handle change, which will generate an arrow function on an event. And because we're not directly passing that event in here, we don't want to invoke it right away either. We're going to run into some problems, as you'll see here. Handle is not defined. Mm. 
Oh no, where did it happen? There's an error somewhere. Use of name, no restricted globals. In my form.jsx, so import form, values, handle change, use form. Oh, it no longer knows what the reference to this is, so the console log was breaking it. My bad, y'all. There we go. All right, so what ends up happening when I type here is everything goes to the dumpster immediately. And it says, cannot read property name of null, and I actually can't read the event is what the problem is. And it's just saying the synthetic event is reused for performance reasons. So if I'm trying to access an event at a later point in time, whether it's the way I'm doing it here via these uh, function references, or if I'm doing this asynchronously, if I'm awaiting some promise to resolve and then I want to reference the event after that promise resolves, we're actually going to run into the same problem. The event won't be persisted, and so we need to persist that event somehow. And we actually can do that via our buddy, our buddy, the buddy I've actually learned recently called event.persist. That will persist the synthetic event. That way we can reference the event that's generated from these on change handlers. That way we can reference e.target.name and e.target.value. So now with that in place, let's re-register for my tournament here. And that console, I should probably actually make that console log come back, shouldn't I? So whoop. And instead of this object, we can just reference the values object. There we go. Gotta love rookie mistakes, y'all. I always tell my students, you will always make typos and rookie mistakes. You just get better at finding them and squashing them rather than letting them, rather than make them take hours upon hours to figure out when you're first starting to learn JavaScript and development in general. So Luke, Tuna No Crust, once again, register, and there we go. We now have a use form custom hook that can be tied to as many inputs as we want and output an object with all of our key and value properties inside of it so we can make our API post requests, register our users, whatever you want to do with it. There you go. Something new we learned today together. If you wanted to get even fancier, we could do as such. I can remove the event off of this register function and remove this logic here and this console log values. I'm going to pass the definition of register into my use form custom hook and also take notice that I have moved it above the use form hook. That's because uh, const values, don't forget const variables are not hoisted. So it would remain underneath use form when it's interpreted and it would try to reference register before it's been declared and you'd have an error. So we're going to move it up here to make sure that doesn't happen that way. It's still going to console log values and we're going to have our use form handle the preventing default for us. So inside of here, we can say, all right, this use form guy here is going to receive some submit callback function as an argument, which is what we pass it. Register is our callback function, our submit callback function. And we're going to make another one called handle submit as a custom function inside of this file that will also be generated with that event. And it will say e.prevent default along with whatever other logic you might want to happen. Maybe you don't want to prevent the default event. You want to check on it and then prevent the default or something like that. And then whatever our callback happens to do, we can just say call that back and we can intermix any custom code in here depending on what your use case might be. I just wanted to show you that's something you can do and something as a junior level developer I would have never have thought about. I'm also going to chain it on as the third element in my returned array down here. That way I can come back up here and pull out my handle submit function. Again, I'm using ES6 array destructuring, so I don't have to make these, uh, these function names the exact same as what I'm returning down here. Just keep that in mind for simplicity. I'm just do making it so. And on my on submit, I can now reference handle submit with any luck. I want to actually refresh the page and we'll see what happens. So once again, let's re-register for my tournament. And there you go. We now have a custom use form hook, even utilizing a cool callback feature that as a newbie developer, I probably would have never have thought of. So hopefully you guys found this uh, demo here illuminating and hopefully learned something new, especially about event.persist and maintaining synthetic events after asynchronous calls or how you pass a function reference that does generate an event that you have to remember for later in React. So if you guys have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments below. Come join our Discord community and ask me some questions, and I'll be happy to record any extra videos you guys are hunting. So other than that, hope you all have an awesome day.